Hello, welcome to the pod. So I'm going to read you a bit of a book that I started writing. Um, I started writing it last night. <laughs> so this is the absolute like first draft and it's not, I'm not going to read for like a long time. It's like, I don't know, 10 pages or something like that. Um, but I'm doing this because I just want to help inspire people to put themselves out there and stop waiting until it's perfect. Because you never know, like from me putting this out there, this episode might end up being like my absolute like best episode. And then maybe someone who knows someone listens to it and goes, well, hot damn, like that's the beginning of a great book. We should sign it before someone else does. <laughs> and then they talk to their contact and then I get an email and someone's like, Esther, we love your book. Let's you know, we're going to pay you, keep writing it, la, 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 la. And then I'll do like a book tour and I'll do like a speaking tour and it's going to be amazing. I'm so excited. And like all of this could happen just from me putting the absolute first draft of my book on my podcast without thinking too much about it. <laughs> you just never know. Like you never know. So yeah, if you are a creative or if you want to create something and you're so scared, don't stop yourself before you even begin. Okay. I'll give you more of an update after. I just want to like read this first and then, and then we can talk. All right. Where is it? I'm like literally just opening it on my computer. There it is. Okay. It says, <laughs> I wrote a note to myself at the beginning of it because I've been thinking about this for the longest time. And I keep talking about it, like on my website, it even says like manifesting a book deal. <laughs> and I kept hearing in my head, like, just write it, just start writing it. And I was like, I don't even know where to begin. So I just started writing to myself. And then after I wrote this little note to myself, I just started writing and it all came out. So it says, <laughs> okay, Esther, just begin, begin writing. Don't worry about structure. Don't worry about the intros or the chapters or framework. The most important thing is beginning. Ask the universe for help and just start writing. Here we go. Don't laugh at me. It's the first draft. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I remember when I was a child, if I wanted to do something and my parents said no, I would ask why, because kids are curious and ever learning. And my parents would respond because I said so. I remember being in trouble for jumping on the couches when I was younger and I was being punished. We got smacks and belts and yelling back in the 90s. And I was crying and crying, wondering what it was that I did to warrant such a reaction. In my eyes, there was no good reason not to jump on the couch. No one else was playing with me, so I wanted to explore. The living room was a jungle, the floor was quicksand, and the couches were massive boulders that I had to climb and launch from one to the other. Sure, I heard mum ask me to stop playing on the couch, but she never explained to me why. Why she cared about the couch, why it was so damaging for me to treat it that way what it would mean if we had to repair it. Why would she? I was a seven-year-old kid. But the thing is, that left me with a feeling of disconnect from my parents, bred from a lack of understanding. I didn't understand them or their reasoning. From such an early age, the seed was planted, that me and them, we were on different pages. That's not a seed you want growing by the time your kid is a teenager. <laughs> Young Esther was not a fan of responses like, because I said so. It made me feel like my parents knew it all and I just don't get it. It made me feel like I wasn't smart enough to handle the answers when they wouldn't give them to me. It made me feel like we weren't on the same team, that they just didn't want me to have the knowledge that they had. And when we treat our kids like they don't need to know what we know, we're teaching them not to even bother trying to know what we know. And when we're raising teens and wanting strong relationships with them come their 20s and beyond, we want them to value the wisdom that we have to share. So sorry. <laughs> Remember back to when you were a teenager. If you were anything like me, there would have come a time in your parents' lives where they'd wished you'd listen to them, talk to them and share your life with them so they could guide you. There would have been a time when they were genuinely concerned about who you were hanging out with and what you were doing when you're not home, and they would have just put it down to teenagers being difficult, laziness, hormones and being closed off rather than recognising that they never built the foundations of trust for your relationship to grow from. When you shut your kid down all the times they wanted you to explain your actions, motives, decisions, you're shutting down the opportunity to teach them how to problem solve, 
how you mitigate risk, how you think through dynamics and relationships, and most importantly, the safety of coming to you for answers about anything at all, knowing you'll respond with your heart, with open arms. And that's the end of like that first little bit. I don't know. Is that a chapter? Maybe. Is it an intro? Who knows? We'll find out. <laughs> and there's the next little bit here. <clears throat> I'm like having a lot of like nerves right now. My voice is <laughs> breaking. <laughs> okay. My kid and I grew up together. We helped each other navigate the world from a place of love, openness, curiosity, and understanding. We haven't ever really fit into the usual parent-child hierarchy because it's more comfortable for us to operate side by side. Of course, our roles as mother and son are the bedrock of our relationship. I teach him about life. I'm there for him. I laugh with him. I come to his rescue. I give him a shoulder to lean on, and I parent him as consciously as I can. But what I'm saying is... I respect his soul, his humanity, and his individuality as much as I respect my own. I don't see him as beneath me or too annoying to bother with. I don't see him as just a kid, and I don't subscribe to the polluted transaction of kids should be seen, not heard. I think I have a lot to learn from him, and he has a lot to learn from me. When he was about six years old, I said something along the lines of, every adult is figuring it out as they go. I don't want you to grow up thinking that I have all the answers and you don't. I said... I want you to know that you and I are learning how to be mother and son together on the job. So if you ever have any ideas on how I can parent you better, you can tell me, okay? I would love to hear about it and I'll do the same for you. I've reiterated that every couple of years and he took it on board. On numerous occasions, he's come and told me when he wants me to be doing more activities with him to connect to him better and I've been happy to hear it. I've always found it important to monitor my reactions to teach my kid that I'm a safe place to be in any context, even in the realm of feedback. Plus, I am truly grateful that he cares to strengthen our relationship by coming to me with these things. He once told me that he wants more of a chance to decide on his own accord to do the dishes or clean his room, and he'd like me to wait a bit longer before asking him to do it. <laughs> I said, of course, let's see how it goes. I've asked him to make more of an effort in the mornings to get himself ready so that I don't have to go through the same teeth pulling process day in and day out because it drains my energy before the day has begun. And I remind him that I can parent better if I'm not pouring from an empty cup. Getting a teenager ready for school that he doesn't want to go to is like uprooting a hundred year old tree. <laughs> Those are just a few examples, but the point is neither of us is pretending like we know more than we do. We remain open to growing together, and I honestly think the thing is, at the core, this is one of the main reasons that I have such a close relationship with my teenager now. I feel like it goes without saying, but in case it doesn't, I'll say it. I'm not talking about everyone, everywhere, in every context. I understand that sometimes you just don't have the energy to respond to the hundreds of questions your kid asks per day, and sometimes it's unrealistic, especially in this modern fast world we're in. Sometimes emotions and reactions get the better of us. It's, incredi it's, uh, it's incredibly difficult to emotionally regulate yourself and your kid. And we're all human after all. It's the conscious effort that counts. With that in mind, I would like to implore you, during the times when you are actively parenting, if you feel called to, explain your actions and motives behind your decisions to your kid. Let them know that you're just a human, doing your best and that you genuinely want the best for them. You'll raise a wise young being who understands you and respects what you have to say. Yay, that's it so far. <laughs> I've started on like the third bit. I'm saying bit. Maybe it's a chapter. I don't know. Um, but it's, it's literally like just notes that I've like dumped onto paper basically. So we won't go into that just yet. Can you tell me what you thought? Is there like if you listen to this and... You, obviously, it's a first draft, but it probably needs editing, la la la, of course. But like beyond that, if you are like, oh my God, amazing, please tell me because that will give me encouragement. And if you hated it, that's fine. Just keep it to yourself because it's probably not for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> there will be someone out there who needs to read this. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I think I'm going to call it Children of the New Earth or something like that because the point of this book to me is to, I guess, just illuminate a different kind of style of parenting than the traditional style that will help strengthen the bonds between people, um, like parent and child, and help, you know, raise emotionally stable kids who can, re you know, self-regulate and communicate and have compassion and 
understanding of other humans and everything. So obviously that will make the world a better place. And that is my goal. So yeah, that's that. Oh my God. I'm so nervous. I'm fucking sweating right now. I have hyperhidrosis. So it's like, I've got overactive sweat glands and every intuitive healer I've seen, they've been like, your sweating is because you have so much power in your body and you don't know how to let it out. So it's just like pouring out of you, (laughs) which, you know, I was like, yeah, I just, because it gets worse as I get older, like, and the older I get, the more I seem to be like containing my inner power because I'm, you know, when you grow up, you're like, oh, I'm learning how to fit into the world, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going through this whole like unboxing situation where I'm just like being as me as I can be and doing whatever I can to, I don't know, just show off as my true authentic self. And hopefully along the way, I will release some of this power. (laughs) I can stop sweating so much and we're gone. (laughs) All right. So life update. There have been um, a million crazy like synchronicities and also just like strange experiences going on lately. Um, I, where do I even begin? Okay. So there was the bookshelf one that I mentioned on the last episode where I saw this like bookshelf. It was my dream bookshelf on marketplace in a price that I could afford. And I've been looking for one for so long. And I messaged a chick and she was like, oh my God, this is so crazy. But I saw your TikTok the other day about your son. And she was like, back then I had this like crazy, like back then as in like a couple of days ago when she watched my TikTok, she was like, I had this like crazy thought that I worked with a guy named Ben like 12 years ago who had a toddler to a girl named Esther. (laughs) She was like, I can't believe I even remembered that. And then here you are dropping into my, you know, inbox on Marketplace. And I was like, whoa. And she was like, I'm just wondering, like, are you, is that the same? Are you the same Esther? And I was like, yeah, fucking earth. I was like, no, his dad's name is Ben. (laughs) She was like, what? And neither of us live in Brisbane anymore. Like we live in completely different towns and it was just so crazy. And I was like, whoa, this feels like the universe lured me in with my dream bookshelf um, for some reason to connect with you again. And I don't know what yet, but it was crazy. And like, she has that kind of energy where I, like when I picked up the bookshelf, it was beautiful, but like I'd known her forever. Um, and the bookshelf is amazing. I'm so grateful. I keep walking into my room and looking at it and I genuinely can't get over it. It's so fucking pretty guys. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So that was one. And then when we were there, when we like, picked up the bookshelf. We went and got a coffee afterwards. This is Conrad and I, and we're standing on the street out the front of the cafe waiting for the coffee to be called. And I ordered it under Conrad's name because no one ever spells Esther right. And they never know what the, you know, and then they're yelling out some random name that they just, (laughs) so I just always choose the name of the person that I'm with. If their name is easier to hear than Esther. (laughs) Um, So I said, you know, to put under Conrad And we're standing out the front. And then in this one moment, just as the barista is about to call out his name, this guy walks between us and the barista down the sidewalk. And the barista goes, Conrad. And then the guy stops and goes, yeah. (laughs) And we were all like, fucking what? And then like Conrad looked at him and he's like, wait, what's your name? And the guy was like, what's your name? (laughs) And Conrad's like, what's your name? And the guy was like, Conrad. And Conrad was like, I'm Conrad. And I was like, oh my God. And the barista looks at me like, what the fuck is going on? Um, And then, you know, Conrad 2.0, like laughing and then walking off, shaking his head in disbelief. (laughs) We got the coffee and we're in the car on the way home. We're just beside ourselves. Conrad was like, how many Conrads have you ever met in your life? I was like, you're literally the only Conrad I've ever fucking met. And he was like, what are the odds that there are two Conrads passing each other lined up in that one moment? Someone yells out the name Conrad. I was like, fuck right off. (laughs) Again, no idea what that means. (laughs) But I was like, Conrad, the universe is talking to you. (laughs) Um, And then there was another thing. What else? So my friend Maggie I haven't seen her or talked to her in like oh years like years 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 probably haven't maybe maybe five years or something like that 
and I haven't seen her kids in like seven years. And Maggie and I grew up together. Like we went to high school together and we, um, we've been friends. Oh God, we were friends for like 10 years, ages ago. (laughs) So I have no idea how long I've known her now, but over the last like, you know, five years or so, we've just sort of drifted apart and like nothing bad, like no bad blood, just different life directions, just going on different paths and everything, but still like heaps of love for each other from afar kind of thing. And her kids and Noah, my son, like they, we, they, they grew up together. They were like almost like cousins, I guess. And, um, like we were always at each other's houses. Like we literally lived in each other's pockets. <laughs> and the other day Noah's like, mom, have you heard from like Maggie and Millie and Dante? And I was like, no, I haven't talked to them in a really long time. And he was like, wonder what they're doing. I was like, yeah. And then dead ass the next day, the next day he comes in, he's like, mom, Millie's messaged me on Facebook or whatever. And I was like, what? That's wild. And apparently she was just like going through her own phone. And then Noah came up as like a suggested friend or something. And at that moment, Maggie saw her phone and saw Noah and was like, oh, that's Noah, Esther's kid. And Millie was like, what? Oh my God. And so then she added him. I'm like, just what are the odds of that? Like that moment that Maggie saw her phone and saw Noah and told Millie and then Millie was like adding Noah. And only the day before Noah was wondering about them. Like, are you fucking kidding me? You can't make this shit up. And then (laughs) this other story, (laughs) fucking story time today. Hey, Jesus Christ. So This other thing happened. I was at um, having like a Friday wine with Haley last week. And normally Friday wine for us is like, it's like we go, um, we finish work early. We get as much work done as we can early in the day. And we finish at like 3.30, get dressed. And then we go out to Burley by like four o'clock and we have like appetizers or dinner and a wine or two, and then we are home by 7, usually, 7.30 at the latest. (laughs) And it's always really fun. The vibe is immaculate. Like, we look forward to doing it. It's so, like, like we just spend the entire time, like, being excited about life and grateful and sharing stories from the week and just, like, jazzing each other up to achieve all the things we want to achieve in life and decompressing and it's really beautiful. And every time we go out, we have beautiful interactions with other people, like incredible. Like we, we are always just absolutely beside ourselves with how many amazing people we meet just by sitting where we're sitting out on the street, like whichever bar we go to, we try and sit outside. Anyway. (laughs) Oh dear. This was not the same. (laughs) This was not at all the usual vibe. It was fucked guys. It was so fucked. So, um, this, so we're sitting outside and while the sun was up, it was still nice, but also I'd only just done Reiki on Haley and retro retrospectively, we should not have like gone out into the wild after that. We were both just on a cloud and probably not, you know, I wouldn't suggest drinking alcohol after Reiki lesson learned. Um, but yeah, it was like, it was almost like we were, it was almost like we'd pulled our human skin back And we just went out in the world as a pair of souls or something, just like light glistening souls. That's what it felt like. And we were just like, oh, the world around us is prickly. (laughs) And But we were still having a nice time. And then I swear to God, like as soon as the sun started going down, it was like vampires came out. The energy shifted. I could feel it. She could feel it. We were like, what in the fuck? Like everything just got like really loud. People started like yelling from cars to people on the street, like not aggressively, but like not not with like, not with purity either. It was really strange. And we were talking and we were sharing like a meal and we had like two wines on the table, the plates between us. I'm facing Haley. We're sitting out on the street. And then all of a sudden I just felt like I felt someone pierce the energy bubble around us. Like I fucking felt someone just like fly in towards us basically. And like my peripheral vision, I saw this dude like just fast walking directly towards us with his arm out. Like this, I'm talking about this in slow motion, by the way. So this was all just very quick. I didn't see his arm out for long. It just time slowed down. Anyway, so I saw this arm like, like launching towards us. And then it's like going for our plate of food. And I just grabbed his wrist and I was like, oh, like from my gut. 
and threw him backwards. Like this forward motion inertia behind this human body was like coming towards us and I stopped it in its tracks and threw it backwards. I was like, <laughs> fucking what? <laughs> but in the moment I was just like, holy shit. I threw him back and I was like, oh, and I said that. And then he like puts his fist up and then like does like a launch forward with him, like his body and his fist, like a quick one, like a, a jolt. And I didn't f- like, I flinched, but I didn't like cower. I, I had this like voice go through my head of just like, if you cower back from this, he's going to think that he is strong and he might actually do something, but he's actually scared of you right now. And he's putting his fist up because he's scared of you. So just stay where you are. And I was like, okay, cool. That went through my head in like fucking point two of a second. And I just, I was up, I was like sitting up like straight and strong and he'd like flinched his fist at me. And I like at best, like shook backwards a little tiny bit. I was like, (laughs) and, um, and then he just starts yelling. He's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. And he walks around from like that side of the table to the other side. And I was like still sitting down, like ready to get up. And I had my like body was leaning forward. My arm was pointed out like straight and strong. And it was like, I had fucking, I felt my energy go from being a wave like wavy energy. And and then it was like it densified and turned into fucking spikes on the back of my own like head and neck. It was like I turned into a dinosaur or something. (laughs) And I was like, whoa. (laughs) Anyway, so I'm like leaning forward and he was just like, I'm going to fucking kill you fucking rah. And I had my hand out and I was like, leave, fuck off right now. I was like, you leave, leave, leave. And it was like, I was casting like a demon out of a fucking body or something like that. It was like a fucking exorcism. And he was like, you fucking spat on me. You fucking, I use like the CCTV caught it and the cops are going to get you. And I was like, I've never spat on anyone in my life. Get out of here right now. Anyway. So like, this is like a whole restaurant of people outside <laughs> and there's no one like said it anything. No one did anything. <laughs> like, it was a very strange interaction. Cause like, if he had just come up to me and said, Hey, Cause he's come up to me before and was like, do you have any money? And I was like, I just have some coins. And I gave him a couple of coins. And if he came up and was like, can I have some food? I would have been like, yeah, have a seat over there. Like there's like a, there was literally like a park bench, like just right in front of where we were sitting. And I would have been like, let me just like order you something takeaway. And I would have done that. I do that shit like all the time, (laughs) but he came out of nowhere, pierced my fucking energy field. And it was like my boundaries for like dark, low, dense, negative energy are so like my boundaries are getting really good and I'm building them up. And like, it felt like it literally felt like someone like just penetrated me or like violated me in some way. And I know that's not what happened. That's fucking dramatic, like chill, but that's what it felt like. And that's like the only thing I can think of as to why I reacted like that. Like why I grabbed it, like what, like I, I ha- like the other possibility was that he just, that I was like, didn't even notice. And he grabbed our food. And then we were like, oh, fuck, you know, get out of here. You don't just like grab someone's food, mate. Like, <laughs> that's so rude. And then, the you know, we would have just asked them for more food and whatever. But that didn't happen. And Haley, she was like, oh, my God, I had this thing go through my head where he picked up the glass and fucking glassed us. And she was like, that's so scary. And I was like, well, that's another possibility. But thank God that didn't happen either. <laughs> um, anyway, he came back like 20 minutes later and the waitress was out there by that point and we were telling her about it and she was like what the hell I didn't even hear it I was like what (laughs) I was fucking yelling from the depths of my soul (laughs) and um she's like picks up the she's like picks up the plates plate and there was like a steak knife and then I just felt him again I was like oh he's gonna come back when she's holding that steak knife and I was looking at it and I was getting really nervous about him just seeing it and grabbing it And then sure enough, like moments after I thought that I like, he came into my field of vision and I was like, fucking hell. So I put my hand up just between like behind, like behind the steak knife between his view of it so that he couldn't see it. And then he was like yelling again and she was like, I've called the cops, blah, blah, blah. And then she went inside and called them. Um, And yeah, then this really nice couple came up afterwards and they were like, Hey, like, oh my God, are you okay? Like that was so crazy. And the dude was like, when I saw him like about to punch you, he's like, I was about to get up. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm fucking same. <laughs> um, so they were really sweet. But other than that, like, I was like, did anyone even like react? And Haley was like, I mean, their faces were like, what the fuck? I was like, man, <laughs> people are so um, desensitized to wild energy, like far out. But anyway, it felt like 
like the second time when he came back, I was like putting a, like a visual, I was visualizing like a love, I guess, from me to him because I was talking to Haley about this, but I was like, I have, I have compassion for him. <laughs> like, I know he just like was so rude and threatened to kill me and, <laughs> you know, and he is, you know, there's a, a so many reasons why he would be in this position he's in. He was obviously like cracked off his head on drugs. Like he was on so many drugs. But the thing I was like saying to her, I was like, we live in a world where it's like, it's so fucking hard for people to exist in general that lots of people are turning to all kinds of substances or just even their phone to escape. Like addiction and everything comes from, wanting to escape or avoid reality in one way or another from what, for whatever reason. And I was like, he's probably like 40 maybe. And he is a male. So he would have like grown up with little to no, you know, emotional support or tools um, on how to express himself or what to do with his emotions if something bad happened to him or whatever. And then I like, I just imagine that he's probably not had the easiest life and now he is probably like semi-homeless and completely on drugs all the time walking the streets of Burley. And, you know, yes, it comes down to personal responsibility to work through the bad things that have happened. Like there are people in the world who have had horrendous things happen to them and they took the other road and turned it into, you know, a superpower of like a wealth of knowledge and, and did good with their lives using what they've learnt and how they overcame it and everything. And then there are people where it's just too much and they don't know how, they don't have the tools. Maybe they have a lower vibration and they live more in the victimhood mentality and they don't do, you know, X, Y, Z to get past it or whatever. Like everyone's circumstances are so different and so unique and also very similar. So it's like, you know, in my head, there was just like all kinds of different scenarios going on. And I was like, regardless, like it sucks that he's in this position. It sucks that we have a world that doesn't help, you know, people on the street like at the core, there's like band-aid fixes for sure. But really at the core, like we need to teach people how to move through the traumas and everything that kind of got them there in the first place. And then, you know, society is kind of taught to be very much like, ugh, that homeless person has disturbed my peace. Gross, get them out of here. And like that, that's really sad. That's like a low compassion kind of situation. So it's nice to build up the love and the compassion and everything um, inside yourself for other people, regardless of <laughs> the situation, even if they do <laughs> try to steal your food and threaten to kill you. <laughs> oh, golly, you just don't know what someone's going through, you know? Um, anyway, <laughs> so that was literally all last week. That was last week. And then the book that I started writing was last night. Um, it's been insane. I'm sure there's more crazy stuff that's happened, but I can't think of anything right now. So um, I've got so many episode topics that I want to start talking about. Like I'll be just doing my dishes or whatever and then just boofs like in flies like, oh, I should talk about this. Or, oh, I should talk about that. Oh, my God, I should talk about this. And I've started this notepad where I'm just like writing down all these ideas and I'm so fucking excited. Like this potty is so much fun for me. I can't even deal. And thank you for listening. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all the encouragement. Like I'm getting so many beautiful messages from people and just, it sounds like everyone's really liking it. And I'm so glad because <laughs> I'm just, I'm winging this, this, like there is literally no planning behind this aside from me just noting down every now and then that I have ideas come through because otherwise I'll forget I've got ADHD. Um, so yeah, thank you for loving it and thanks for, you know, allowing me the space to just, just do this podcast in the most organic way possible for me. And I really just appreciate you being here because otherwise I'd be talking to myself. So, <laughs> which you know what I would still do. <laughs> okay. I'm going to end it here. Bye.